For over 80 years, the MCAT has been the key test used to judge applicants for medical school. Now, it's undergone revisions over that time, but the last time we did so was 1991. We all know how much health care and medicine have changed since then. We felt it was time to take a deep look at the MCAT, what it assessed, so that we could be confident that it was helping us pick the best doctors for the future of health care. For generations of people who've taken the MCAT, they've seen it as a test that emphasized first and foremost physics, chemistry, math, the natural sciences. What we're realizing now is that there's a lot more that goes into the making of the doctor of the future. For example, we understand that there are psychological, social, behavioral factors that really are very central to determining the health of an individual. So that one of the key changes is to build on those foundations in the natural sciences. We still need those but to add some emphasis on those basic principles of psychology, behavior, sociology that actually underpin human health. In addition to that, being a, a physician in today's world requires real skills of critical thinking and analysis. And so the design of the exam will be to really test not just what an individual knows, but the way they think about problems. Not just scientific problems, but problems that are social, ethical perhaps. Uh, we think this will provide us a much broader picture of the person who seeks to go to medical school. The goal of the AMC in all of this is to help medical schools and their admissions committees find the best possible people to be the doctors of the future. The MCAT, especially as we've improved it, we think will help tell us a lot about what not just what students know, but how they think. But there's so much more than that that goes into to being a good doctor at the bedside or in the clinic. So we're trying to develop other tools that admissions committees could use in their assessment of applicants in making their decisions about who to interview. We're looking at changes to the application itself. We're rethinking the way we might seek letters of recommendation. Uh, around students. And then when schools have made the decision to interview applicants, we're helping them think about new approaches to interviewing that will be more revealing about the whole person. We call this holistic admissions and the, the desire is to get a multi-dimensional look at the person who seeks to be a physician. The decision's been made to institute the new MCAT in 2015. But that means that students entering college as early as 2012 will need to be thinking about how they prepare themselves, not just for the MCAT, but for admissions to medical schools of the future. That will mean thinking a lot about the kinds of courses they take. For example, introductory courses in psychology, sociology, will probably be more important to help students get a grounding in those social behavioral determinants of health. Some uh, schools will offer interdisciplinary courses that might draw together different elements of these disciplines that will be very appealing to pre-medical students. But I think the thing that I would emphasize is that there's so much value in a broad education and the undergraduate years are the years to pursue that. I've had a wonderful career in medicine but I wouldn't give up the fact that my undergraduate major was in philosophy. It taught me how to, to read carefully, think critically. Uh, there are so many pathways to the kind of mental skills that will contribute to making a good doctor. So most of all, we want students to realize that there are a breadth of avenues they can take as an undergraduate on their path to medical school.